Hey guys, so this time we'll continue to discuss the rules of softball um, from rule 5 to rule 8. So let's start. Rule 5, which is the game. Section 1, choice of turn at bat. When we say choice of turn at bat, um, it is a bat in the inning shall be decided by a toss of coin unless otherwise, otherwise stated in the rules of organization under which the schedule of game is being played. Section 2 is the fitness of ground. When we say fitness of ground, it is, a, um, it is for a game shall be decided by the plate umpire. Section 3 regulation game regulation uh, a regulation game shall consist of seven innings first is a, a full seven innings did not to be played if the team second team sec, second at the bat bat scores more runs in six um, innings or before the third out in the last of seventh inning a game that is tied at the at the end of seven innings shall be continued by playing additional innings or until the side has scored more runs in their half of the inning before the third out is made. A game is called by the umpire shall be regulation, regulation if five or more complete innings have been played or if the team seconds at bot has scored more runs than other team has scored in five or more innings a regulation tie game shall be declared if the if the score is equal when the game is called at the end of five or more completed innings or if the team second at bat has equaled the score of the first team at bat in that complete inning these provisions do not apply to any action part of players or spectators which might call a forfeiture of the game. The plate umpire shall declare a forfeit in favor of the team not at fault in following cases. If a team fails to appear on the field or being on the field refuses to begin a game for which it is scheduled or assigned at the, at the time schedule or within the time set for a future for forfeitures by the organization in which the team is playing. If after the game has begun, one side refuses to continue to play unless the game has has um, um, has been suspended um, or terminated by the umpire. Section 4 Winner of Game it shall be the team that scores more runs in regulation game. The score of called regulation game shall be the score at the end of the last complete inning unless the team second at bat has has more runs at the first at bat in the incomplete inning. In this case, the score shall be that of the incomplete inning. The score of, early, of a regulation tie game shall be shall be the tie score when the game was terminated. A regulation tie game shall be replayed from the beginning. The score of forfeited game shall be 7-0 in favor of the team not at fault. Section 5 Run Ahead Rule A, he uh, a run ahead rule shall be, sh uh, shall be used at all tournaments and championships. 15 runs after 3 innings, 10 runs after 4 innings, or 7 runs after 5 innings. 20 runs after 4 innings, or 15 or fifteen runs after 5 innings. Complete innings must be played unless the, 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 the team se second at bat scores the required number of runs while at bat. When the team first at bat reaches the required number of runs in the top half of the inning, the team at bat must have their opportunity to bat in the bottom half of the inning.
Section 6 is a tiebreaker. When we say the tiebreaker, it is um it is starting with the top of the 8th inning and each half inning the rafter the offensive team shall begin its turn at bat with a player who is scheduled to bat 9th 10th in 11 and with an um, in that respective half inning being placed on second base. The player who is running can be substituted in accordance with the substitution rules. Section 7, Scoring Runs One run shall be scored each time a runner illegally touches first, second, third bases, and home plate before the third out of the inning. A run shall not be scored if the third end or last uh, last starting at second base does not have to touch first base in order for legal for a legal run to be scored. Section 8. Charge Conference Offensive Conferences There shall only be one charge offense, uh, offensive conference in an inning. Note this include the batter, runner, um, but um, on deck batter and the coaches among themselves. It is not a charge conference when a pitcher is putting on a warm up, um, warm up jacket while on the, on base. Or if the offense confers while defensive team is in conference, provided the offense is ready to play when the defense is ready. In a second charge conference shall result in the ejection of the manager or coach insisting on add another charge conference. While the defensive conferences, there shall only be three charge defense, defensive conferences in a seven inning game. For every inning beyond seven, there shall be one charge conference per inning. So let's proceed to rule 6 which is the pitching regulations fast pitch only Section 1 the pre the preliminaries before commencing the delivery or pitch the pitcher shall may not take the pitching position on on or near the pitcher's plate without having the ball in his position Shall not, um, um, pitcher shall not be considered in the pitching position unless the catcher is in position to receive his uh, um, to receive the pitch. Pitcher must have both feet on the ground within the 61.0 cm or 24 inches length of the pitcher's plate. The hips shall be in line with the first and third bases and both feet must be in contact with the pitcher's plate. Pitchers must, while standing on the plate and the ball in either the glove or the pitching hand, take the signal or, or appear to taking, uh, or taking a signal from the catcher with the hands separated. Um, um, pitcher must, after taking the signal, bring his whole body to a full complete stop with the ball held in the hand or glove with the butt held together in front of the body. Um, this position must be held for not less than 2 seconds and not more than 5 seconds before releasing the ball. Note, holding the ball in both hands to the side of the body is considered in front of the body. Section 2 is starting the pitch. When we say starting the pitch, it, it is when one hand is taking is taken off the ball or the pitcher makes any motion that is part of his wind up. Section 3 legal delivery. The pitcher must not make any motion um, to pitch without immediately de delivering ball to the batter. The pitcher must not must not use a pitching motion in which, after the ball in both hands in the pitching position, he removes one hand from the ball, takes a backward and forward swing, and returns to the ball to both um to both hands in front of the body. The pitcher must not um 
uh, must not use a wind up in which there is a stop or reversal of the forward motion. The pitcher must not make a two revolutions of the arm on the windmill pitch. Um, however, he may drop his arm to the side and to the rear before starting the windmill motion. This allows the arm to pass the hip twice. The delivery must be an underhanded motion with the hand below the hip and the wrist not farther from the body than the elbow. The release of the ball and follow through of the hand and wrist must be forward and pass the straight line of the body. Both feet must remain in contact with the pitcher's plate before the start of the pitch. The, the, the pivot foot must remain in contact with the pitcher's plate at all times um, before the forward drag lip or hop. In the act of delivering the ball, the pitcher may take one step with the leading um, non-pivot foot simultaneous with the release of the ball. The step must be forward toward the batter and within the 61.0 cm or 21 inches length of the pitcher's plate. And the pivot foot must remain in contact with the pitcher's plate or push off and drag away from the pitcher's plate or be airborne or be airborne prior to the stepping non-pivot. Of foot touching the ground. Then it is illegal to drag, leap, or hop and then the land and throw as long as the original push starts um, from the pitcher's place. It is not illegal of it is not illegal to step up with a five foot and then drag, leap, or hop and throw. As the pitcher pushes from the pitcher's plate, all movement of the pitching arm must be continuous. The pitcher shall not push off from the place other than the pitcher's plate prior to separating his hands. And the pitcher has 20 seconds to release the next after receiving the ball or after the umpire indicates play ball. Section 4 Defensive positioning. When we say defensive positioning, the pitcher shall not deliver a pitch unless all defensive players except the catcher, mm, the uh, except the catcher who must be in the catcher's box, the position and fair and fair territory. A fielder shall not take a position in the batter's line of vision, or with deliberate unsportsmanlike and unsportsmanlike. Intent, a modern to disrupt the butter. Section 5. Foreign Substance No member of the defensive team shall at any time uh, during the, the game be permitted to use any foreign substance on the ball. A pitcher who licks his fingers must wipe his fingers before making contact with the ball. Under the supervision and control of the umpire, power may be used to dry hands and must be kept on the ground behind the pitcher's plate within the pitching circle when not in use. Approved manufactured clothes that are embedded with resin only are permitted to dry the hand and must be kept in the back pocket or in the belt. Applying resin on the ball or into the glove and then placing the ball in the glove is an illegal act. The pitcher shall not wear tape on his fingers or sweat bond, or a sweat, um, sweat bond bracelet or similar type item on the wrist or forearm of the pitching arm. Section six: The catcher. The catcher must remain within the catcher's box until the pitch is released. The catcher shall uh, shall return the ball directly to the pitcher after each pitch, including after a foul ball. Note: An additional ball shall be awarded to the batter. So, for the exception, this does not apply after a strikeout or when the batter becomes a batter runner or 
when there are runners on base or when a foul ball is filled uh, is fielded close to the foul line and the catcher throws to any base for a passy ball out or when on a check swing on a drop third leg situation the catcher throws to first base to retire the butter runner section 7 throwing to a base when we say throwing to a base uh, the pitcher after has taken pit has taken pitching position shall not throw to a base during a, a live ball while his foot is in contact with the pitcher's plate if the throw from the pitcher's plate occurs during a live ball appeal play the appeal is cancelled The following is the effect for all section 1 to 7 above. Section 1 to 7, any infraction of section 1 is an illegal pitch. First, the umpire shall give a, a delayed dead ball signal and call an illegal pitch. If the illegal pitch is not hit, an extra ball is awarded to the batter first base if, if ball for and runners are advanced one base. If a runner legally advances on a legal pitch, pass ball or wild throw by the catcher, any extra bases obtained by the by uh, may be retained if a runner is put out after advancing one base, that runner will be called out. Section 9. Warm-up pitches. At the beginning uh, of the first inning for both, for both teams, or when, a, uh, or when a pitcher relieves another, not more than one minute may be used to deliver uh, not more than five pitches to the catcher or another team member. At the start of each half inning after the first inning, the pitcher from the previous inning shall have one minute to throw up to three warm-up pitches if one minute has expired or is about to expire the umpire shall restrict the pitcher to one to to one warm-up pitch section 10 no pitch no pitch shall be declared when the pitcher pitches during a suspension of play the pitcher attempts a quick return of the ball. A runner is called out for leaving a base prior to the pitcher releasing the pitch. Then the pitcher pitches before a runner has retouched his base after a foul has been declared and the ball is dead. A player, manager, or coach calls time or employs any other word or phrase or commits any act of the ball is live is alive in in play for the obvious purpose of trying to make the pitcher commit an illegal pitch section 11 drop ball if the ball slips from the pitcher's hand during his delivery a ball is declared on the batter and the ball is re will remain in play and the runners may advance at their own risk and the legal pitcher or a pitcher who has been declared an illegal pitcher as um, um, section 12 illegal pitcher a pitcher who has been declared an illegal pitcher as a result of the team exceeding the the charge conference limit may not may not return to the pitching position at any time for the remainder of the game Rule 6 Pitching Regulations Modified Pitch Only Section 1 Preliminaries Before commencing the delivery pitch, the pitcher may not take the pitching position or on or near the pitcher's plate without having the ball in his position. Um, the pitcher um, shall not be considered in the pitching position unless the catcher is in position to receive the pitch. Then the pitcher must have both feet on the ground within 61.5 um, 
0 cm or 24 inches. And length of the pitcher's plate, the shoulder shall be in line with the first and third bases with the foot must be in contact with the pitcher's plate. Section 2, starting the pitch. The pitch starts when one hand is taking off the ball. Section 3, legal delivery. The pitcher must not make any motion to pitch without immediately delivering the ball to the butter. Section 4, defense. And next, let's proceed to Rule 7, which is the batting. Section 1, the on-deck butter. The on-deck batter at start at uh, of an inning is the lead-off batter who must remain in his on-deck circle until called to the batter's box. Once an inning has started, is the uh, is the offensive player who in the inning batting lineup is the next player to enter the batter's box. May take a position within either on the deck circle, so he is behind the batter and and not on the batter's open side, and may loosen up with no more than two official softball bats and approve warm up, but or a combination not to exceed two and note a bat with which on the deck butter is loosening may uh, loosening up may not have anything attached to it other than an ISF approved bat attachment. Section two is the batting order. When we see batting order, it is um, order of each team must be on the score sheet or the lineup card and must be delivered. Shall submit uh, and shall be uh, must be delivered before the game by the manager or captain to the official scorer and in the plate umpire. He shall submit it to the inspection of the manager. Uh, or captain of the opposing team. Section 3. Batting Position The batter must take his position in the batter's box within 10 seconds after the umpire has declared play ball. And an offensive team member may not under any circumstances Deliberately erase the lines of the batter's box at any time during a game. This includes a coach erasing the lines during the pre-game meeting. Section 4, which is a strike, is called by the umpire. When any part of legally pitch ball enters the strike zone before touching the ground, and at which the batter does not swing, for each legally pitch ball entering the strike zone before touching the ground and at which the batter does not swing. For each legally pitch ball struck at, at um, ball struck and missed by the batter, the batter cannot legally swing at any pitch ball that hits the ground or plate. However, if the batter swings and misses the pitch prior to the ball hitting the ground or plate, it is a strike. Section 5, which is a ball called by the umpire. For each legally pitch ball that does not enter the strike zone or or touches the ground before reaching home plate and it's not swung at touches home plate touching home plate and at which the batter does not swing and the fake um, the ball is in play and runners may advance with liability to be put out section 6 is the batter the batter is out when we say the batter is out when the third strike is won at and missed uh, and the ball touches any part of the batter's person not swung and the pitch ball uh, hits the 
butter while the peach is in the strike zone. Uh, and when a butter enters the butter's box with uh, or is discovered using an altered bat. And note, the butter is also ejected from the game. And when the butter enters the butter's box with or discovered using an illegal bat. And note, the bat is removed from the game. And when his foot is completely outside the lines of the butter's box and touching the ground or any part of a foot is touching home plate when he hits the ball, fair or foul. And when he leaves the box to gain a running start but has returned to the box um, when he makes contact with the ball, then the exception the exception of it is if no contact is made with a pitch with a pitch ball there is no penalty if the batter ex if if the batter swing and misses the box to gain running start uh, misses the ball remains alive or dead And now let's proceed to rule 8 which is the butter runner and runner. Section 1, the butter becomes a butter runner. Um, when he legally hits fair or foul ball, when the catcher fails to catch third strike before the ball touches the ground and there are less than two outs and first base is unoccupied or there are two outs this is known as the stir, uh, this is known as uh, as the third strike rule and the effect of it in, in section 1a to b the ball is in play and the batter becomes a butter runner with liability to be put out and when four balls have been called by the by the plate umpire or when the defensive team elects to intentionally walk a butter um, uh, butter by either the pitcher, catcher, or head coach notifying the plate umpire. Note that this certification to the plate umpire shall be considered a pitch. This can occur at any time prior to a batter beginning and completing his turn at bat regardless of the count. If two batters are to be um are to be walked intentionally, the second the intentional walk may not be administered until the first uh, butter reaches the first base. If the umpire mistakenly allows walks at one time and a first butter fails to touch first base, no appeal will be honored on the first butter. Section 2 which is the butter runner is out. When we say butter runner is out, it is when the catcher drops the third strike and the butter runner is legally touched with the ball with well off base or thrown out prior to reaching the first base. And when a fielder legally catches a fly ball before it touches the, gr the ground or any object or a person other than a defensive player. And when after hitting a fair ball, he is tagged while off base or thrown out prior to reaching first base. And when he fails to, ad to advance to first base and instead enter his, his team area, after a fair ball is hit or after a base on balls, balls is issued or any time that he may legally advance to first base, when an infield fly is declared. Section 3, the butter runner is not out. When we say the butter runner is not out, when a fielder makes a play on a butter runner while using an illegal glove. And the manager of the offended team has the option of taking the result of the play or 
um, having the player resume batting, uh, batting, assuming that the ball and strike count prior to the pitch, with other runners returned to the base held at the time of the pitch. Section 4. Touching bases in legal order. Runners must touch bases in legal order, um, like first, second, third, and home plate. Um, if a runner is obstructed um, at a base preventing um, a runner from touching that that base, um, when a run when a runner is returning to the base left before the uh, before a cut fly before um, before a cut fly is first touch or the missed base while the ball is in play, he must touch the bases in reverse order. And the ball is in play and runners must return with liability to be put out. Section 5. Runners are entitled to advance with liability to be put out. When the ball leaves the pitcher's hands on his delivery and when a, uh, when a pitch ball is batted, on a thrown ball or fair batted ball that is not blocked. On a thrown ball that hits an umpire. When a legally caught fly ball is first touch. And when a fair batted ball strike an umpire or runner after um, having, having passed a fielder other than the pitcher and provided no other fielder had a chance to make an out or has been touched by a fielder. Um, including the pitcher, when a live ball becomes lodged in a defensive player's uniform or equipment, and the effect, um, and the effect is in a section five A to to G, the ball is in play. Section six: A runner forfeits his exemption from liability to be put out. If at any time he fails to touch a base, he is entitled to be um, to before attempting to make the next base. And the exemption of it is if a runner is obstructed at a base, preve uh, preventing the runner from touching that base. If after overrunning first base, he attempts to continue to second base. If after dislodging a base, he attempts to continue to to. Uh, to the next base if on a legal pitch not hit he attempts to advance beyond the one base to which he is legally entitled when advancing beyond an entitled base uh, due to a fielder intentionally contacting uh, a thrown ball with the uh, with a detached equipment a fielder intentionally um, contacting a fair batted ball with detached equipment when advancing beyond a protected or awarded base when he has been obstructed, when advancing beyond one base on a legal pitch that is also pass ball or a wild pitch. Section 7. Runners are entitled to advance without liability to be put out. When forced to vacate a base, of, uh, a base because the butter was awarded a uh, base on balls, and the ball remains in play unless it is blocked. Any runner affected is entitled to one, uh, to one base and may advance farther at his own risk if the ball is in play. And when a fielder prevents the runner from making a base or impedes the progress of a runner or butter runner who is legally running bases if the fielder is not in not in position of the ball or not in the act of of fielding batted ball or making a fake tag without the ball and in a position of the ball he pushes a runner off a base in an attempt to gain an out or in position of the ball but not in the act of making a play on the runner which intentionally impedes the progress of the runner who is legally running the bases. Section 8 
A runner must return to his base. A runner must return to his base, but need um, but need not touch the the intervening bases. Um, when a batted ball is declared foul, when the umpire declares the ball to have been legally batted, and when a batter runner is called out for interference, when the on deck batter is called out for interference, when the on when the on deck batter um, or any other non-playing team member creates interference. When any part of the batter's person is touched by a pitch, ball swung, swung at and missed. When a pitch ball hits a bat, a batter. When with less than two and runner on first base, a fielder intentionally drops fair fly ball, including a line drive or a bunt that could be caught by an infielder with ordinary effort after it is controlled with a hand or a glove. Section 9, the runner is out. When we say the runner is out, it is while, it is when, while running to any base in regular or reverse order, um, he runs more than 0 0.91 meters or, th or 3 feet from the base path to avoid being touched by the ball mm, in the hands of a fielder. When, while the ball is in play and he is not in contact with the base, he is legally touched with the ball in the hands of a fielder. When on a first play, a fielder, while holding the ball, contacts the base to which the runner is forced to advance, touches the ball to the base before the runner reaches the base, tags the runner before he reaches the base. And note, if a forced runner after touching the next base for any, for any reason toward the base he had last occupied, the forced play is, re is, rest is restated. Reinstated, rather. When while the ball is in play, he fails to return to touch the base he previously occupied or missed and legal appeal is made. And when anyone other than, other than another runner physically assists him while the ball is in play or when, when, the ball come, um, when the ball becomes dead after a home run or an award of bases. Section 10. The runner is not out. When we say the runner is not out, when he runs behind or in front of the fielder and outside the base bat in order to avoid interfering with the fielder attempting to field the batted ball in the base bat. When he does not run in a direct line base, provided the fielder in the direct line does not have the ball in his position. When more than one fielder attempts to field the batted ball and the runner comes in contact with one who in the um with one who in the umpire's judgment was not entitled to field the ball. And when he is hit with a fair untouched batted ball while off base that in the umpire's judgment, no fielder had no opportunity to make an out. And that would be all about the rule 5 to rule 4. Thank you.